Come along and watch a rehearsal tonight while I'm at my meeting. My mother pushed away from the dining room table. Let's go, she said and grabbed her purse. Ugh. I was a shy 10 year old and would rather have stayed at home and read The Secret Garden again. But I knew that with her, there was no resisting. So I mumbled, okay, and dragged my feet. My mother loved the theater. She'd been an amateur actress in her youth, pretty good by all accounts. By the time she was 50, she'd left the stage to throw herself into a multitude of causes, still carrying her flame for theater though, on the Sheboygan Community Players Board. I'd seen many of the group's plays with my mother, The King and I, South Pacific, I loved them. But a rehearsal? Oh, I fretted. What would it be like in there, especially by myself? How long would I be stuck? How many strangers would I have to meet? Mother led me through the huge dark auditorium and planted me in a seat. Please let me wait in the car, I begged, clutching a railing. I don't belong here. Don't be ridiculous, she whispered. Just sit and watch. Off she went, leaving me to wonder when, oh, when would she come back for me? My eyes began to adjust to the dark, and I spied two figures on stage. Huh, no costumes. They were dressed in ordinary clothes. I recognized one, Mr. Benson. He was a nice man from the same office as my father. That night he seemed strange though. Sleep no more, sleep no more, he kept saying. What did that mean? Oh, and there was Mrs. Gruby, the pharmacist's wife. She seemed strange too. But was she angry? She was ordering Mr. Benson sharply to go wash his hands. Not at all like the friendly woman I knew, mother of two little girls. She seemed to have become some towering force. I could feel it and a man in the front broke the spell. He rose suddenly and talked to the two in normal tones. And they responded, chatting, nodding, smiling, completely changed from the moment before. Then just as suddenly, the actors switched back into their larger than life selves and their fierce argument continued. Then, a knocking from some unseen door. Knock, knock. What was going on? These people seemed to be able to descend at will into a completely different world. A wilder one where strong currents swirled around and through them. They seemed to feel so much. As alien as the world felt to me, I leaned in wanting more and more. What were they saying? How could they talk this way? How did they break the bonds of self-consciousness and fear? And if they could leave their small selves and delve into worlds deep and wild, could I too someday? I wondered. An ocean of time has passed since that Macbeth rehearsal years ago. I've worked for decades as actor, playwright, director, and producer. Rehearsals, however, never cease to amaze me. Gathered together in a room, actors and director commit to diving deep into their histories and imaginations in search of clues to a text. The requirements to work in that sacred space? Skill, of course, but equally important, curiosity, vulnerability, passion, and courage. Theater artists grapple tirelessly with words and objectives. And when they nail it, they tap into stories larger than their own. The jackpot? Unlocked meaning. 
communal meaning. We mine meaning. That's what we do. Theater, plays, gifts from the Greeks passed down through the centuries. Soon, in rehearsal rooms together, we will walk on floors taped off like our stage set. Move, explore, gestures in space. Maybe touch someone's arm. Together, we'll find connections to words, thoughts, and feelings, looking face to face into each other's eyes. That's what we do in our sanctum sanctorum, our room where it happens. One actor might say, my line here is so powerful, I think I should try directing it directly to you. Or a director might say, try leaning into the word love and take it right out to the audience. Playwright David Ives wishes the whole world could live like it's in rehearsal, all committed to an agreed upon goal. I second that. By braving honesty of expression, maybe we come to an understanding far deeper, more nuanced than we'd had before. In that spirit of candor, I, right now, need to acknowledge my mother. She was so smart to push me to move past my fears. And of course, she was right. I belonged. No, I belong.